Joshua Mills is an ordained minister, he's a recording artist and an author, and in his new book, Creative Glory, he provides insight on how you can receive that spark of creativity from the Holy Spirit, that really creative guy, you know, that will make you dream big and live a life of no limitations. Joshua, Thank welcome you. to Hope Today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's a God morning, and uh, listen, I believe that the glory is here, and God's ready to impart this creative glory to everybody that's watching. Well, amen to that, because I mean, that's what we really are after today. We don't, we don't want to just talk about God, do we? We want to see God move. Tell me about that. Could you define what you mean by creative glory? Well, the way that I explain creative glory in, in my book is that it is the inspirational flow of the Holy Spirit that basically shines God's light, his life, his hope, his joy, his peace, his wisdom, all of the divine aspects of who he is he shines it into our life. In other words, in creative glory, we're, we're given an opportunity to enter into the heart and the mind of God in order to bring his purposes from heaven into the earth. Mm. Well, let me ask you about that then. How do I get into that creative flow of God? I mean, <laughs> I know it's there. I know that he's creative. How do I partake? I think one of the biggest struggles that people face in life is the warfare in the mind. And a lot of people don't believe that they are creative. I know I heard you, Tom, say that, that you didn't feel like a very creative person. And I think a lot of people are there in that place, not looking at their lives as being creative people. They think, you know, maybe they're more analytical or logical or more left brain. When in reality, the very first way that God introduces us to himself in scripture is as creator. In the beginning, God created. Mm. And that revelation needs to get deep inside of us first in order for us to get started recognizing that we carry the spiritual DNA of the creator. We were created to create. Every seed produces after its kind. And so if we can at least agree with the word that says that God is creative, then that should begin to set us forward on this journey looking for opportunities where God begins to speak, where God begins to open up provision, where God begins to lead us into divine connection. Um, I think it's all there. It's all around us, but we have to have eyes to see it and a willing spirit to be able to move into it. Why in this season, for such a time as this, would you say it's so important for us as Christians to gain this revelation and so that we can go out and share it to other people? Well, you know, writing this book, I actually felt like this was a prophetic mandate that the Lord had given me, and it had been rolling through my spirit, but then the Lord said, now is the time. And I really believe that creative glory is being given to us as a revelation to move forward in these difficult, challenging days. I mean, there's things happening in the earth right now that have never happened in all of time in history before. and there seems to be a tendency for people to uh, retreat, withdraw, um, become fearful in these kinds of times. And yet God is calling his people saying, rise up. Now is your time. This is the moment you were created for. I'm reminded of Isaiah chapter 60, verse one, that says, arise and shine. If there's anybody that can shine in this season, it's the people of God. If there's anybody who's going to succeed in this season, it's the people of God. If there's anybody that's going to take territory and move forward and advance in this season, it is the people of God that are moving and working and allowing creative glory to flow through our lives and be expressed in fullness. There, there's, a, there's a business expressing their creativity, and yet the church has sometimes retreated from that and retreated, separated spirituality from the arts and from creativity. How can we move forward in that? I think, you know, a religious spirit always attempts to dismiss whatever it cannot control. So in the church, there has been uh, an attack of the enemy to bring a religious spirit that that attempts to dismiss creativity, attempts to stifle it because God is creativity. He is 
the essence of creative glory. And wherever God shows up, solutions come. Wherever God shows up, life is born. Wherever God shows up, the heavens begin to open and the supernatural begins to flow. And so we need to connect with God. We need to get in the scriptures, find out what God says about us, find out what the word says and begin to believe God's word and begin to move in God's word and realize that God is giving us permission to create with him some of the most magnificent things. There is no real separation between the creative arts and spirituality. I I mentioned in my book, I feel like spiritual people should be the most creative people on earth Mm -hmm. and that truly creative people should be the most spiritual people. And that that should be, you know, all intertwined and it should just flow and it should come out. And I think we've been seeing this in recent years, you know, God expanding our mind about what worship looks like. And we've seen, you know, the painters being invited into the sanctuary and we've seen the the dancers being invited into the sanctuary and we've seen the flaggers being invited into the corporate expression of worship. And I think it's so wonderful because it shows the diversity of not just who God is, but who God is in his people. He's calling all of us together from every culture, from every nation to to come together and rise up in who he is and release that creative glory into the earth. Joshua, I think sometimes we jump the gun in our enthusiasm and Mm -hmm. we have a vision and expect God to be the provision for that. How important is it that we get the heart of God? Just exactly what you're saying here, that from that, he promises to give us his perfect provision. I absolutely agree with that. Um, Because, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are called creativity in the world that are not necessarily creativity. It's it's actually a a dark perversion or... um, an attempt of the enemy to put something on the scene that God really never intended. And I think even like you said, as believers, there are times when we can get excited about something we want to do in the flesh and we jump into it. And then we are like, God, where are you? Why are you not helping me with this? Where's the provision for my vision? And the truth is God never says that he's going to provide for your vision. He, He promises that he will provide for the vision he gives to you. If God builds the the house, then listen, he's going to build that house fully. He's going to build that house to the the fullest extent. He's going to bring that thing into full manifestation. If you build the house in your own ability, try to do it in your own workings, you labor in vain. If you try to build it and listen, whatever you start, you're going to have to finish, but whatever God starts, he promises that he will finish. And so I think that is the key getting into the spirit and saying, God, what is is it that you're calling me to do? And then flowing in the leading of the spirit, flowing with the Holy Spirit. Um, I think one of the proofs that we are the children of God, sons and daughters, the Bible says they that are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. And so we need to be led by him in these days going forward. And as we are, we're going to discover the greatest breakthroughs. We're going to, we're going to receive downloads for the most unique technology. We're gonna begin to advance it with the most beautiful kinds of designs and patterns and architecture, all that displays the glory of God for his glory. It's not about us, it's not about people looking at us, it's about people seeing who he is through his people. Thank you. That is so good, Joshua. Would you take this time? Cause there's someone watching who says, well, that's great, but I don't really feel like painting a painting right now. I'm struggling in my family. I." I Could you just pray for them and pray for that creative force, that creative glory, that creative miracle that they need? Absolutely. Creative glory may not necessarily be painting a painting, making music. It may not be dancing or acting or all these other things we think about creative arts, but creative glory truly is God bringing his solution to you that you might live a life of victory. So Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you for every viewer that's watching right now that you are releasing of your spirit. You're pouring out your creative glory from within them. Lord, expand their understanding of who you are. God, give them visions and supernatural dreams. Lord, I thank you for flowing, bubbling up within them with abundant life that will overflow 
in every area, Lord, that they might be a witness and a living, shining testimony of your goodness, your glory, yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Joshua, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. The book is called Creative Glory, Embracing the Realm of Divine Expression. Again, Joshua, thank you so much.